I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Um, we have Michael Garland here with us today, and um, Michael is an artist. He paints, he does illustrations, he does portraits, he does landscapes. He, he's just, he's been in the business for a very long time, and um, welcome, Michael. Thank Thanks you for, for coming me today. Here. Where would you like to start? I know you've been doing this for a real long time. Well, I, like you say, I'm a professional artist, so I've done everything you can imagine in the business. Every kind of illustration. I've done covers for Forbes and Fortune and Newsweek magazine. I've done, I've worked for Scholastic f for 38 years. Um, I have books. I write and illustrate picture books. That's what I'm most well known for, uh -huh. writing and illustrating picture books. I go all over the country doing author visits. But when I, it's, uh, I'm a freelancer, so there are gaps in my schedule all the time. So when I like to fill those gaps with painting, my own personal painting. I paint landscape painting, I paint still lifes, I paint, I do portrait commissions. So I have a dual identity artistically. <laughs> so, but sometimes they overlap. Some of my books, I use a, a landscape. One of my first picture books is really a combination of my uh, landscape painting and writing. Mm -hmm. uh, Illustration-wise, my career changed when I started to write. I created my own content, and that really prolonged my career to this day. So I like to do everything. I never have any idle time artistically. Right. If, if there's always some project that's waiting to be done with free, when I have free time. Now, what about your landscapes? Um, how how do you go? Do you paint in the studio or or plein air? Well, what, I do both. I yeah. mean, I really enjoy going getting my easel out and going painting on the spot. Uh -huh. But because of my schedule, it doesn't always allow that. So when I get a chance to do that, I do it. But if I can't, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick sketch and then shoot reference. And then I could be painting the reference that I shot six months later uh -huh. when I have a gap in my schedule. Uh -huh. this, this painting behind me, this is the Hudson River? Yes, it's from, that's a view from uh, West Point. Uh -huh. I've done a few commission paintings from that area, and uh, that's a looking up the river. That's Constitution Island, so it's a really nice view. And it's then late in the afternoon, yeah. late in the afternoon, yeah. many of my scenes are local. Although I've done a whole series of paintings in California commissions, uh -huh. but I really love just going out and uh, painting local scenes. So it's a lot of the Hudson Valley, the Hudson Valley, Connecticut, Newtonic River, uh -huh. Duchess, uh, Putnam. So I go all over. I just love when I have time to shoot local scenes. Many of them are right in Patterson, uh -huh, really, really. Local, really local scenes. The Great Swamp in Patterson. I was just going to ask you about the Great Swamp. Yeah, I love yeah. the Great Swamp. So, yeah. so uh, uh, you up all the way up to Wingdale. Uh -huh. uh, it's really beautiful up there, right by the Holland Valley yeah. uh, Golf Club. And um, I just love taking the canoe out and uh, either sketching or drawing or shooting photographs for, that I'll use later for paintings. That's what I'm doing next weekend. I'm going on a canoe trip with the Great Swamp. Oh, I love I'm really that. looking forward to it. I love that, it. yes. I, yeah. I love wildlife. I'm illustrating yeah. a book of wildlife. Uh -huh. uh, last year I had uh, Fish Had a Wish was um, one of the top 25 picture books by Kirk, uh, Kirkus, and it was also a wildlife theme. So I, that's, that's a good example of when I blend my illustration and my love of the outdoors and landscape painting. Uh -huh. I saw um, a lot of beautiful landscapes on your website, on your fine art website, yes. but I also saw portraits, yes. um, which surprised me because I didn't know that you were uh, a portrait sure. painter. Sure, I, I've done uh, commissioned portraits for large corporations, and I've done portrait covers for Fortune magazine uh -huh. and, and Forbes magazine. I've, I've done a lot of Forbes magazine covers in the past, so it's. I, I use that same skill set to do corporate portraits. And then I do, I've, I've illustrated lots and lots of young adult novels, and basically many of them are just portraits of children, which uh -huh. I do also. For the cover? or yeah, Well, for the cover of the book, yes, for uh -huh. our cover picture books. So the same skill set I use to do uh, portrait commission. So uh -huh. my, I'm fortunate in that I've made a living just as being an artist for almost my whole career. Yeah. Uh, um, so it's fun. I also, in, in the last two years, I've been teaching at college at Mar Marist and Mount St. Mary's uh -huh. a little bit, only part-time as an adjunct. So I, I always find something to do. I'm right. fortunate that I've been able to yeah. do what I like. Uh, yeah. So what do you paint? What, what do you teach painting or, or what do you uh, teach? No, two-dimensional graphic design uh -huh. uh, um, to... Uh, yeah, at Mount St. Mary's, they're non-artists and at uh, Marist, they are artists and aspiring uh, graphic designers uh -huh. and animators. That's great. That's, that's great. I, I think that sometimes that's what artists have to do. I mean, I don't know anybody who can just survive on painting. Yes. You yes. know? 
It's, it, Unless it, you're Picasso or... <laughs> well, it's like walking on a very high, tight rope without a net. Yeah. Or, uh, as I say, when you're graduating from art school, it's like jumping out of the airplane and uh, knitting your own parachute on the way down. So yeah. you better be good at it if you really want to make a living. Yeah. Uh, many of the people I started out with are just kind of, even though they had very talented people, they weren't able to sustain themselves. So I'm fortunate that I have been able to. Yeah. What about shows? Do you ever enter, uh, go into, put your work into jury yes. shows? Or? Yes. I, I'm in, uh -huh. I'm just, I just delivered a painting to the Hudson Valley Art Association show that's going to be at Old Line, Connecticut. The opening is uh, June 21st, and that's a prestigious show, and it's uh -huh. hard to get into. And it's very nice being in that uh, the uh, gallery from the Hudson, uh, the Old Line artist group. That's very uh, prestigious and historic group. So it's very nice to show your work at that uh, gallery and to rub elbows with some of those famous artists who painted yeah. there. Yeah, and what did you um, enter into that show? It was a local scene. It's, it's called Spring Afternoon. And it was actually uh, painted fr um, uh, from a small study f uh, of um, up up at the Wonder Lake. That's a, I, that's, oh, I live right oh, near yeah, the Wonder yeah. Lake, so I go there yeah. all the time to paint and draw and sketch. So um, I've never been there, but oh, it's, I, I've, it's I've driven by it. It's a great a place to hike, uh, and yeah. you can get onto it from uh, uh, from the access road on the by. Um, uh, 84, uh -huh. or you can go in off Cushman Road. That's, yeah. that's generally where I go. Yeah. I hike there winter and summer, and uh, I fish there, and so I find a lot of inspiration there. Oh, when that's like. nice. Uh, Spring Afternoon is, is one of the uh, paintings that you gave that, that people will be able to see right now on this show. Um, yes. They'll be able to see yes. Spring Afternoon. Yeah, if you're interested to see more of the work, you can just go to uh, michaelgarlandfinearts.com. Uh-huh. And, and just scroll through all. I have lots and lots of paintings there. And if you're interested in my picture books, you can go to garlandpicturebooks.com. Uh huh. Well, tell me a little bit about the picture books. You you were telling me about Grandpa's Tractor before. How it has a local well, connection. Grandpa's Tractor uh, was inspired by a tractor, a rusty old tractor that's stuck in the mud uh -huh. uh, on Cushman Road. It really exists. And I drove past there for 25 years. And uh, I, I always imagined some farmer got off that tractor and never got back on. So I knocked on the <laughs> door, and sure enough, that's actually what happened. The person who lives there uh, inherited the farm, and um, he, I talked about, uh, I talked to him about it, and he sold off the property. And that's basically what this book is about. It's a, a nostalgia look, look at a tractor, farm wall tractor, which they're all over the place up here. Yes. If you yes, know anything about yeah, those ubiquitous yeah. red tractors, they're, uh, and that's what they are, farm wall tractors. And uh, this is about a grandpa who takes his son back to see the old f uh, family farm, which is nestled right in the middle of suburban sprawl. <laughs> so, so, and he tells him all about what life was like on the farm and all the different jobs a tractor would do. And this, is, this was in the original Art of Children's Book Show last year. And it won the Nebraska State Agricultural Award, which is oh, pretty isn't nice. That great? They know their tractors, so yeah. that was kind of nice. Yeah. So I've done lots of things. I write about... Um, I, I, I do two or three books published a year, and that's like, in picture books, that's like winning the lottery. So I'm yeah. very fortunate yeah. that I have, uh, I was able to do that. Car Goes Far is my newest book uh -huh. um, uh, from Holiday House. Yeah. And uh, my most recent book from, from uh, Penguin uh, and Dutton is uh, uh, Super Snow Day. Uh -huh. And that was inspired by my children, how much they love snow days. It's about a little boy, all the things he does. Yeah. When he has a day off from school because it snows, and it's a hidden picture book. There are all things hidden throughout the. Uh, oh, so the kids ha can can search for yes, the books. Yes, yes, and they all relate to the snow. Their titles, of yeah. poems about snow, about uh -huh. songs about snow, uh, uh, book titles about snow. So it's all snow related. That's great. And, That's great. Uh, yeah. Um, you just had a book signing, didn't you? I was down at the uh, book expo at Javits Center uh -huh. uh, last week, to signing books. For, for Holiday House. I was signing the paperback version of Fish Had a Wish. Uh -huh. So it's great to see. And I had a couple other books there. I, have, I, I work for about four or five different publishers. So I have, uh, and that's how you have to sustain yourself. Yeah. It's all freelance and there's no promises of a uh -huh. steady book or a book coming out each year. So sometimes the book will be in contract and I'll be waiting and I'll sell another, book, another idea to, um, to another company. Yeah, I find I love to go to artist signings or, or book signings when um, when they're kids' books because yes. I like to buy the books for my nieces and nephews and yes. and have the artists yes. say something to them and then give them to them for Christmas yes. or the kids or, really love it. Yeah, I, yeah. I really enjoy when I do my school visits around the country, 
I'm like a, the teachers have been reading to them uh -huh. and preparing them for my uh, arrival, and so I'm like a rock star when I <laughs> get there. Now, and then by the time they get to college, I'm teaching them in the college. I have to do somersaults to get them to, to uh, pay yeah, attention. Really have yeah. to work to inspire them to to focus. But it, both things are very gratifying. It's yeah. fun to share the all the accumulated knowledge I have, uh, artistically speaking with uh, young aspiring professionals. Yeah, yeah, and, and these books are great. The, the artwork is great. And now, there's, there's a big difference, though, from your fine artwork and, and, and the work that you do in these books. Yes, well, there, there is. I, when I, I'm designing for a page as an illustrator and, uh, and, and text. Uh, uh -huh. Illustrations are made to complement the story and the text. When I design a painting or I illustrate a painting, it's just I'm there to please myself and create a painting, and a painting is there, they're meant to be looked at the wall, has different presence than a printed piece in uh -huh. a book. So I, uh, and I, and it's only me that decides what goes in. I, when I do a picture book, it's a collaborative effort between my editors and my publishers and the art director. So we all have input into that. And uh, so that's the difference. So sometimes it's nice to just paint whatever I want. And if it comes out well, it's only because of me. <laughs> and and uh, I bear all the responsibility. Right, so just, just quickly, um, Tell me again about the show in Old Lyme, oh, the, the, the dates for it's it. The, uh, it's, it runs about six weeks. It's the openings on the 21st. Okay, of? Uh, of uh, June. June, okay. And, and this year, are you going to be opening your studios for the Artist Open Studio Tour? Yes, I'm, I'm really looking forward to That's that. Great. So, so I know there are a lot of people who are interested in art around the area, so it'll be fun to, to have my uh, studio open and let people come in and see what I do. That's great. So so everybody, you can um, see Michael's art on his websites. There's two different websites, one for fine art, one for um, his children's books. And also in October, you'll be able to visit his studio um, on the Artist open studio tour it'll be his first year that he's with the open studio tour and we're really looking forward to it so thanks for coming michael thank you, and i'm looking forward to it um, as well and thanks to the crew and everybody who's here today thank you